hanging out with a man who I'm proud to say is my friend, Johnny Gargano. Johnny Wrestling! Yeah. We are at an undisclosed location at here house. in Orlando. Where are you? At house. my house. In my house in Orlando. And I, I, as I understand, a lot of uh, wrestlers, we don't call them wrestlers anymore, a lot of superstars yeah. live around here. Yeah, pretty much everyone lives in this complex, so it's really interesting to walk around and go to the, the local gym and the local uh, complex gym because basically it's full the whole time with people and everything like that. So you can never not, I guess, turn a side street and see a professional wrestler somewhere. So, so this it's is a great world to live in. It's like a dorm room, a it dorm. Is, wow. <laughs> it's a dorm for the performance center, yeah. So when you got the call from WWE where you're like, hey, where should I live? And they're like, well, just live where everyone else lives. Yeah, uh, I, I actually, we, me and Tommaso sent our wives out. Uh, I, and like we were like we don't care we'll live wherever <laughs> we're like we'll live in a dumpster for all we care but our wives have um, particular tastes and they like to live in a nice place so they chose this location because it is one of the nicer places I guess I don't know things uh, so yeah uh, we, this is a wife call this was a Smart. oh we're, we're married now so we gotta yeah, yeah, whatever you want and you guys are like I just want to wrestle yeah. just it's five minutes from the performance center, so that's that's really all we're cared about. But yeah, we like I said, we would have lived in that tree right there if we wanted to. It's a good looking yeah. tree, though. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> How often are you at the performance center? Every day. Really? I'm there every day. So yeah. This is like you know, for people that don't know, this is a full time job. Yeah, it's full time job, and like it's 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 amazing. You know, if you would have told me when I was eight years old that I get to live my dream and wrestle for WWE and go to the WWE performance center, which is an amazing facility with just. I mean, legends are walking around on a daily basis. I walk around and I see Shawn Michaels almost every day, wow. and that blows my little eight-year-old mind. It's it's amazing. Sure blows your current mind too. It blows my current mind, my eight-year-old mind, my my fourteen-year-old mind, and my twenty-nine-year-old mind. I'm sure it'll even blow my fifty-five-year-old mind when I look back on this. But yeah, it's crazy, man. Like I'm I'm really lucky. It's an amazing opportunity. When I first got to know you five or six years ago in Cleveland, when you were working your way up through the independents, I actually was the ring announcer for some of your matches. You were which was amazing. Uh, I remember asking you, like, what, what's, where are you going to go from here? And you said, WWE is the only thing that I want to do. Yeah. TNA was doing the gut check at the time, which was giving a lot of guys a chance to at least get some exposure. But what was it about that that you said, I, I don't want to do that. WWE is what I want to do. I mean, when you're a little kid, honestly, like, your goal is to wrestle at WrestleMania. That's your dream. I mean, you watch WWE and you look at that, you're like, that's WrestleMania. I want to be there one day. And for me personally, last night, NXT TakeOver Orlando was our WrestleMania. And to go out there at the Amway Center in front of 17,000 people, mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. Like I said, you, we've, we've known each other for a long time. And to you, we've done shows in front of, what, like 50 people? <laughs> 50 people, and that's, that's being generous sometimes. Uh, 50 people, and to go and be in front of 17,000 people WrestleMania weekend for the biggest company in the world, it's, it's, yeah. it's awesome, man. Does anything change when you're in front of a crowd that big? It doesn't. You know, it, it, you, my first time, and that was uh, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, uh, I was like, at the Barclays Center, I was like, oh, man, it's weird, because you walk in, every time we walk in these big arenas, we're our mind is blown there's gonna be people actually sitting all the way up there <laughs> we're like there's gonna be humans up there that's insane uh but nothing changes it's kind of business as usual you don't really notice it because like i've been doing this for so long at this point i think a lot of us have that like it's kind of just like uh you're wrestling in front of, like i said it's just like you're wrestling in front of 50 people you don't notice there's people all the way up yeah. there you look up you're like wow that's amazing but once you're in the actual match it, it doesn't bother me at all people talk a lot though about the wwe style of wrestling and what's changed or what have you learned in coming to wwe i mean i learn something new every day and i think if you're in this profession you can never stop learning uh especially like i said earlier with the minds around us on a daily basis yeah. There's so many different minds and so many different ways of doing things. And wrestling, I feel, is such an art form that there's no right and wrong way to do things. You can always do things a certain way and do things this way and do things that way and make it work and make it beautiful. Uh, so I'm, I'm con continu continually learning. I think like the, the main thing for us here is when you do indies, you kind of have one little camera and it might maybe be a phone sometimes that, that you're kind of <laughs> you're kind of wrestling for and you kind of wrestle more for you know the live audience and sure. you still do wrestle for the live audience yeah. when you're wrestling around 17,000 people but in the in the, the grander spectrum of things you're wrestling for that camera and you're wrestling for that camera and you're wrestling for that camera and that camera and that camera the 50,000 cameras they have and yeah. you kind of have to make things work uh that way because 
through that camera is a million people watching. Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of have to think in that logic, but nothing's really changed, but you continually learn every single day. The indie style of wrestling, I've noticed as a fan, you interact with the crowd, like even talking to individual people in the crowd or yelling things, which doesn't happen nearly as much in NXT or WWE. Do they kind of say, hey, just work for the cameras instead? No, I mean, I, I think it's... I mean, when you do live events, when you do like the live events that are untelevised, you kind of have a little bit more fun with that. Yeah. Like it's kind of more like an indie show. It's kind of a little bit more, uh, you're kind of more interactive with fans because you kind of have that opportunity to. But when you're doing like the big shows, like the takeovers, you kind of want to create a moment and you kind of want to create something where viewers can get sucked in. And upon doing that, I mean, you sometimes you get lucky and you're Daniel Bryan and you have something that just you come out and do this <laughs> and it catches on and everyone is so interactive in itself. Uh, but yeah, like I mean, you, you don't really get told anything like that, but when you do do live events like that, you can kind of have more freedom to kind of play around. Uh, this isn't your first time in WWE. You've had some other, you know, opportunities. Can we talk about the first time you walked Ooh, down yeah. the WWE ramp? Yeah, I was Cedric Von Hausen. I was 19 years old. Uh, I, I, I was basically, I was a child. <laughs> and I, I, I remember, like, I, I, I got there that day, and, like, they, I, I thought... I didn't know what I was going to do, and then they came up to me and they were like, "Oh, this is what's going on. This is going on. Okay, now we're gonna take you to wardrobe." I'm like, "Wardrobe? That's I, I have stuff. Like yeah. it's really weird." Like, I'm like, "No, we got a costume for you." I'm like, "Oh, okay." And they bring me like the Keebler Elf outfit. I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> Look this up if you haven't seen yeah. it. Cedric Von Hausen versus MVP on SmackDown. That was my first WWE uh, experience. Uh, but like, like the it went so well and like. Just like it's so intimidating, especially as a 19 year old, to be in like that environment, yeah. <laughs> just thrown in it. Uh, but yeah, it went really well, and like it was an amazing opportunity. And like, I, it's 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 cool to look back now that like everything has gone so well. It's yeah. cool to look back now and be like, oh yeah, that's something cool I did. <laughs> when I imagine when you get that first call from WWE and you're 19, you're like, I'm set. I'm I'm gonna win the WWE title <laughs> next month. You know, like. But then when when it kind of tapers off and they don't call you again yeah. for another couple months or years, uh, what do you do from there? I've always had a very uh, set game plan. I kind of looked at guys like Daniel Bryan and CM Punk and guys like that uh, that kind of did everything they possibly could on the indies. Yeah. They were the, they were the man on the indies, and then they went to WWE and they were superstars because they were, they were ready to rock and roll. And I I I, I said it in my mind I was going to do everything I possibly could on the indies. I was going to travel the world. I was going to get as good as I possibly could. And then when the stars would align and the time was right, it would happen for me. Uh, and I, I felt like it was getting towards the, the end of my indie run, and I kind of felt I kind of had that weird thing where I was still doing indies, and I was also doing WB, and I was doing all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but like I felt like I did everything I possibly could. I wrestled everywhere I wanted to wrestle. Um, I think it was time to kind of go on and do this other thing and live my childhood dream. Uh, yeah, it's it's it, it, it's always been my set game plan to do that, and I was lucky enough to live it through. You had this deal originally where you were working WWE but still working indies how is that even possible I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I don't know like when we were like I'm one of the people I'm kind of I'm the kind of person that like I don't live in the moment sort of thing I guess I'm not a hardy boy uh, <laughs> I don't live in the moment uh so I think that's gonna be one of the things where like I look back on it and I'm like wow that was a really crazy time I was able to do that yeah. but that's so wild about professional wrestling right now in 2017. It feels like anything is possible. I mean, with the the, the Cruiserweight Classic, that was mind-blowing because seeing guys who I've wrestled with for years finally get the opportunity they wanted, the opportunity they deserve, because guys like me who you look at and you're like, oh, he's awesome, but he's never going to go to WWE because, like, his size or whatever. They say that about a lot of guys like me and anymore – that that isn't a thing anymore. I mean, yeah. guys like Daniel Bryan kind of broke that glass ceiling, and they saw like, look, guys like that can draw money. Guys like that can main event WrestleMania. Yeah. Anything's possible. Like with the Cruiserweight Classic and with the UK tournament, and now with the women's tournament, they announced. Yeah. Like it's freaking, it's crazy. It's a crazy time to be a wrestling fan. In 2017 is just a, amazing. Like for me as a wrestler, it's a beautiful time to be a wrestler, and it's a beautiful time to be a professional wrestling fan. It's such a different environment now from when you broke into the business. Like. You know, Vince always loves the big man. They talked about that for the longest time. Obviously, that's transitioned a lot. When you first broke into the business, were you like, I just have to eat everything all the time, lift the heaviest weights, oh, and yeah. weigh 240 pounds? Oh, yeah. I, I took, uh, the, 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 I think the hot thing at the time was like Cell Tech and Nitro Tech because Brock, <laughs> Brock Lesnar was taking it. And I was like, oh, I got to get sure like, was, I got to yeah. be like Brock Lesnar. I got to be real big like Brock Lesnar. Uh, but yeah, that was like the mindset. It was like, oh, you got to be, you got to be the big guys. And then like, 
like indie wrestling I mean, like you look at indie wrestling and guys like me like there were a lot of like a guy like me on the indies is a normal sized guy yeah. right? <laughs> like it didn't matter uh but yeah back then it was like oh man it's you it's kind of the land of the giants yeah but anymore it's like you look it's like oh wait it's all my friends now <laughs> it's like kevin owens and yeah. Sami Zayn yeah. and like guys and, and seth rollins and guys like that who are like i've wrestled them <laughs> yeah. so it's wild to me to watch monday night raw and be like oh that's my friend and that's my friend and that's my friend and we're all just hanging out now it's 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 amazing <laughs> you were an indie guy with a plan there's a lot of indie guys who just love wrestling yeah. and never work out and just you know wrestle on weekends what do you say to the indie guys who are coming up and want to be where you're at right now and i i the thing i try to preach the most when anyone asks me for advice right now i say just be a good person <laughs> first and foremost be a good dude that's that's the main objective i try to get across be a good dude because if you if you're passionate and you work hard and you're driven any more right now like i said in 2017 anything is possible yeah. i'm living proof anything is possible so if you're a good person work hard i believe ultimately things are meant to happen to good people so what a year you've had <laughs> i mean you had match of the year last year not just tag team match of the year <laughs> match of the year in nxt yeah. uh, when you were in that match did you realize you guys had something special going on there i think uh after takeover brooklyn we kind of after we had that match, we were like, oh, we kind of have something special here with Revival. I think uh, our our just our just styles and everything about us just kind of meshed really well. And after we had that match in Brooklyn, we were going to two out of three falls in Toronto. And in that moment, looking around, like, it felt really special. I always watch, like, the old WWE video packages and you see, like, the crowd going nuts. And you're like, wow, that's amazing. And to be a person that actually caused that <laughs> is mind-blowing to me. To e even be, like... Like, for me personally, to be considered a match of the year in WWE, if you would have told me that was even possible, that's nuts. And the fact that you look at the match year, like, the, the voting and things like that, like, the ballot on the WWE, on, the ballot on WWE.com, it was us, and then number two was Sami Zayn and Nakamura. Yeah. That's two NXT matches at the top of the card. Yeah. I think that just speaks volumes for what NXT is. I mean, people like to look at it and they say, like, oh, that's the developmental brand of, NX, of WWE. It's not. It's the third brand. It's it's a completely different style. We're bringing something completely different to the table, and we want to go out there and show the world what we can do just as much as anyone. You and Tommaso have something special, uh, which is amazing. Have you always had this chemistry? Uh, it's interesting. Like being, we were kind of thrown into a tag team together, but we always had chemistry as opponents. Yeah. We were always really good against each other. We wrestled each other in uh, England for the very first time. Then we wrestled each other in Chicago, Illinois. And we wrestled each other in Reseda, California. And we've always had really good chemistry. But we were kind of thrown together at a tryout. Like, we roomed together and we, we shared a car together. And we've always been friends, yeah. but we've never teamed together. So the first time we ever actually teamed together was on NXT television. The first time we ever teamed together was the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic against Bull Dempsey and Tyler Breeze, our debut. And then... I feel like it's it's funny because people see us and we've been tagging for like a year and a half at this point. Uh, I feel like just now recently we kind of started hitting our stride. It takes like a good solid year of teaming together yeah. just to kind of get to know each other. And now we live together and we're together all the time. Uh, yeah, I mean, we kind of caught lightning in a bottle with a lot of things. And I think we're so different. We're so opposites like in real life that I think opposites attract in that sense. And we just bring something completely new to the table. I mean, what you're doing in the ring, even on your own, is incredible. Do you think about uh, you know being a singles guy down the road? I mean, I've always been a singles guy. I know Tommaso's always been a singles guy. I'm a singles guy in my heart uh but i'm just gonna take whatever whatever comes to me like i i believe diy is something special i believe sure. we can bring a lot of different things to the table and I, like i said like like we had match the year <laughs> so that's kind of harder to, to, to go up against so there's something special going on there so uh, like i said i've always been a singles guy but maybe i'm a tag team guy now you guys are obviously gonna wrestle each other at some <laughs> point here i mean i mean we did it in the cruiserweight classic it was amazing too. and a lot of people said a lot of great things about it and a lot of people loved it uh i mean i think that's that's kind of our dynamic we can we can go against each other we can team together but i think right now our bond is so strong i feel like we we have a lot a lot more left in us going forward to do a lot of cool things together who is your direct contact in nxt who's actually booking the matches oh i mean triple h is very hands-on oh, really? it's his baby it's it's it, and, it, and that's still mind-blowing to me because yeah. he's like, like i said i grew up and triple h is the man so like you get texts from triple h no i mean you'll see <laughs> that no. would be amazing <laughs> <laughs> no, i mean we we 
we, we, we see him as a, he's very hands on in the product, and it's super cool to see because he's such like he's such he has such an amazing mind and such a, like amazing vision for NXT. I mean, as you can see, the product in itself, the product is amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, it's 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 really special, and it, like it's it's cool to be a part of something like this. It's cool to be a part of something that I think we're gonna look back on years from now and say, man, that NXT was freaking awesome. And I, who knows when NXT is gonna be at that point? Yeah. I mean, years from now, it could be something way bigger than it already is, and it's already huge. But you know, I think the the ceiling is endless for us. I mean, WWE peels back the curtain just a little bit, and we see how much Triple H helps out with all of the wrestlers. Is he actually like giving you pointers in the ring, like play to this camera or do this to you know during your entrance? Yeah, yeah, he's great. I, I mean, you you watch like the WWE 24 specials yeah. and things like that, where he's so hands on. And and he's so open and, show, and showing everyone things and giving advice and things like that. And that's what I said earlier. Like, there's so many minds around, especially a guy like Triple H. Like, I grew up watching Triple H. And, and he's – like, I feel sometimes like he doesn't know that he's Triple H. Like, like when he gives us direction, I'm like, that's Triple H over there. <laughs> it's so super cool to me. Like, none of this like, – like, you think I've been here for, like, two almost two years at this point? Like, yeah. you'd be like, oh, this is kind of business as usual. <laughs> Nothing is lost on me. I went to Access uh, a couple of days ago, and my face was on a banner. And I was like, why is my face on a banner? I was like, there's a picture of Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker right there. I do not belong in this place with those guys. So, yeah, it's still not lost on me, man. It's still amazing. So, do you call Triple H Trips, H, Hunter, Paul? Uh, Hunter, uh, which is, you know, uh, yeah. uh, Mr. We, Leves. Me, me and Tommaso call him Uncle H sometimes. We feel like he's our uncle. Uh, he's our fun uncle. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, the Funkle? Yeah, Funkle. He's the Funkle. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> wow. I want to talk about Glorious. Oh boy. How did that even come to be a thing? So me and Tommaso's dynamic is of such, I have really bad, goofy ideas. And I'm like, oh, we should never do that, though. And Tommaso's like, no, let's do it. So I was like, oh, it'd be funny if, because, like, here's, like, so we were at the Cruiserweight Classic, and they played that song. And we all thought the song was for the Cruiserweight Classic, because we loved the song so much. We're like, oh, this is the theme for the show. That's awesome. This is a great song. And it wasn't. We're like, wait a minute, it wasn't. And we heard it was Bobby's song. And we're like, oh, it's Bobby's song. We're so jealous of Bobby. We get to do this. So when the day it was released on iTunes, I played it and I was like, man, it'd be funny if we just like ran up to Bobby in the gym and like played his song and filmed it. And Tomas and I was like, that uh, we can't do that though. And so Tomas was like, oh, let's do it. So we were actually in the gym, and Tomas was like, you want to do that glorious thing with Bobby over there? He's working out, and uh, he's like, I was like, you really want to do that? I was like, we want to bother him and say like, hey, you're, I know you're working out, but can we film this stupid little internet video? Uh, and He's like, yeah, let's go do it. Let's go do it. So I think Bobby actually finished his workout. And that's the most amazing thing in the story to me. Bobby finished his workout. And then we're like, hey, can we film this thing? And Bobby's like, yeah, sure. Uh, so Bobby actually, like, fakes a set. But he's doing a set. So he's completely cold. And he grabs, like, 80-pound dumbbells. And, like, just starts repping them out. I'm like, whoa, that's cold 80-pound dumbbells for this set. Uh, but, yeah, we posted that first video and it just it blew up immediately and i know we were i remember we were getting on the bus to go to the show that night and the social media director was like uh uh justin leslie i'll give him a shout out uh social media guy justin was uh was like hey like those glory i see this yeah, interview yeah, too yeah. so uh give him a shout out yeah. uh i think he looks for these so hey justin okay. uh <laughs> try not to say anything controversial uh yeah, so we did that when I got on the bus, and he's like, hey, man, those Glory Spawn videos, keep doing them. And I was like, he's like, they're awesome. I was like, okay. So that whole night, we recorded like like 10 of them, and we were up late. We're like, hey, Bobby, get in bed, and let's do this one. And like, hey, Bobby, go to the bathroom, and we'll pop out of this one. Uh, so yeah, like it, it kind of took a life on its own, and like, it, 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 I think that honestly helped us more than anything with like, every, like I think that really kind of cemented us together me and Tomas was the glorious bomb because that we get that at access yesterday we were taking photos with people and there were so many requests of hey can we do a glorious bomb and so yeah it's almost so that the, the lady running the thing was like hey this is taking way too long <laughs> we got to get through this line <laughs> a lot faster but yeah so it was really it's pretty cool if you watch back the cruiserweight classic does it make you cringe every time Moro mispronounces your name during your first match <laughs> i blame daniel bryan for that actually okay. uh he's always like there okay there's two pronunciations there's the italian version of gargano okay and like and then there's the the americanized version which i say of gargano but there's the right way and, and the, the wrong way. way there is of course so it's funny because tomaso it's either champa uh -huh. or champa champa is the correct way so it's like gargano they some of the people call us gargano and gargano and champa which is both wrong 
<laughs> Gargano and Champa rhymes like Tampa. <laughs> uh, those are the correct ways. So it's funny. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I kind of blame Daniel Bryan for that. But it's, I, I've wrestled him for I've wrestled him a long time ago, and he's always called me Gargano. And like M Dog and there calls me Gargano because he's a, that's the Italian version, uh, and Italian people do that. But yeah, so can we kind of break kayfabe and walk through this door and show you who's in there? This because this is amazing to me. Yeah, or call them out here. Sure. Is this okay, Brian? Okay. I don't know if Tommaso's still in here. Let's see. We're we're still in the. Oh yeah, everyone's still in here. Okay, just we just want to say hello. Is that okay? Yes. M Dog Matt Cross, even though he doesn't have the mask on, I'm sorry. Which is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing, by the way. And, and who's who's the who's the dog over here? Oh, Harry Harrison. He's gonna get some interview time. Hi, Harry Harrison. Hey, buddy. This is Tommaso's dog. Oh, he's gonna do say something, man. Why don't you start talking? That'd be cool. Who's your favorite tag team? <laughs> okay, excellent. I heard that. And look, and I just want to point out, look what uh, is on the TV watching, here. Watching the product. Company guys. Company guys. Company guys watching the product. And the amazing NXT TakeOver Orlando, which you can watch now on the WWE Network right now, which we are doing. And what's this right here? The WWE Network tonight, WrestleMania. And I think this is a good thing to point out yeah. as we wrap things up. Very proud, very proud. My wife also made me little little sugar cookies of such that have been out here for uh, like like weeks. These are not good. So if anyone would ever decide to eat these, bad idea. But yeah, so that's that's the, we're very proud of our accomplishments. All right, we'll head back outside. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> this is awesome, by the way. This is amazing. Wrestling is forever? Yes. Plug the shirt. Oh, yeah, get a, yeah get a zoom in on the shirt. Wrestling is forever. Look at that plug in. Go, go, go buy that merch right now. It's. A, Matt, you can just stand up. This is, you're an Adonis of a man. Yeah, you're real big, man. Look at that. Look at that shirt. You want to do a quick plug? Let, let Matt do the quick plug. WrestlingisForever.com. We all know it. We all have the itch. We can't scratch it. We can't scratch it. It's, it's passion. It's wrestling. You know the score. Wrestling's forever. This is the go. greatest beard in pro wrestling, by the way. Wow. <laughs> Son of Havoc. Wait. Did I ruin it? Oh, um, yeah, he's my good friend of Son of Havoc. Yeah, he's good. Okay, let's head back outside. Thank you, everyone. I hope they're not too mad at us for that. Okay, good. Uh, actually, that's I think that's it. We we talked a lot about wrestling, and uh, we saw the inside of your house, and uh, I'm just so happy for MTV you. Cribs, man. Pretty like, much, yeah. Like with with the dog and everything, <laughs> I'm just so happy for you. Thank you buddy. I, I mean, I, I knew that you were always going to make it. It's just a matter of when. So it's always a pleasure, man. Thank you for doing this, and well, it's always good seeing you. By the way, oh, it's I, a, never, I don't get to see you anymore. So this is true. Seeing you. The yeah. only time I see you is like I think the last time I saw you uh, was. Uh, at uh, Ronan in, in yeah, South yeah, Florida, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Johnny does his entrance, and he's rounding the corner of, of the ring, and he sees me, and he comes out and gives me a hug with his big sweaty body, yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. okay, <laughs> it's, it's very kind, but now my shirt's covered in man juice. Yeah. Uh, that's good no, not, no. Uh, one final question: If yeah. you could book uh, a dream WrestleMania match Ooh. for you, oh. singles tag match, whatever. Uh, who would it be against? What kind of match? Man, I, I, I'm going to have to say, honestly, uh, I'm going to back to my childhood here. I'd say me and Shawn Michaels in a Iron Man match just because that had such an impact on my life. Uh, but, yeah, me and Shawn Michaels, if he wants to come out of retirement for that, that'd be, that'd be great. <laughs> but yeah, I, that's, I mean, that'd be the, the wildest of dreams, me and Shawn Michaels one-on-one. -on -one. All right. Thank you so much. Let's, let's have a man hug of here. Of course. I won't get any man juice on you. I <laughs> You're the man. Thank Thanks, you.